everyone, I'm Michaela Kathleen and in this video I'm doing my August reading wrap up. And the first book I read in August was Dry by Neil and Jared Schusterman. I just read the Scythe series by Neil Schusterman and one of my childhood favorites is Downsiders by Neil Schusterman. So even though I wasn't as sure about this one as far as the concept compared to Scythe, I was still excited. And it did deliver. This is a near future kind of dystopian but like a very realistic dystopian and also like very near future in which California has run out of water and so the book is kind of following our main characters trying to survive this I think like week or so without water and it immediately got my interest. The stakes get high very quickly you're immediately like on the lookout for shifty characters and seeing who's gonna take advantage of this situation. And aside from just our main characters' viewpoints, all of which I enjoy, we also get snapshots of other kind of random things that are happening throughout the city, which was super fun, and then also had the added bonus of those snapshots did end up playing into the larger story later on, so that was also fun. The characters are all interesting, none of them are perfect, so there are times when you dislike a lot of them and times when you like them. So overall really good character work. One complaint I had at the end, which this is vaguely spoilery I guess, is that I feel like way too many people survived this book. I definitely feel like more of the characters should have died by the end of the book. It made it just ever so slightly not believable. One character in particular. Also there's this twist with this other character who has kind of a big secret that we don't find out until after he's kind of already out of the picture at the end of the book, and I did not like the twist. I found it to be very weird. But yeah, overall a super enjoyable, very fast-paced read that also had great characters. After Dry, I reread Let's Talk About Love by Claire Kahn. This one is about a girl who is trying to navigate relationships as a person who is asexual and biromantic. And she's also kind of trying to figure out what she wants to do with her life as far as college goes. Which this was a book that I debated unhauling, mostly because it was kind of slow for me the first time around. I think I liked it slightly better on my reread. I'm still holding on to it. It's not like the most well-written book. The timeline on it is very strange. There will be these giant time jumps that weren't very clear. A lot of the characters are actually really annoying. The main character Alice is kind of a drama queen. Her family is incredibly annoying. It's got this trope of her parents wanting her to go to college to be like a doctor or a lawyer. R lawyer is what they really want, which I understand why that is a thing that exists in real life and it sucks that it does, but it's one of my most hated things. <laughs> the main character's friend is strange. She's very confrontational. I don't like her very much. I think her, she's totally in the wrong in the big fight that she has with the main character over the main character spending a lot of time with her person who ends up, spoiler alert, being her boyfriend. The only character that's like consistently likable was the best friend's boyfriend, but he was also very boring. <laughs> Some of the writing and the dialogue feels kind of forced. A lot of it isn't super fleshed out from like the characters to the concept that the book is exploring. Like the main character's parents have all this power over her college and stuff and yet we never actually meet them in person. So yes, overall a little bit slow, deeply flawed, but okay-ish book <laughs> is kind of my review. And finally, I read Loveless by Alice Oseman. This is another book with an asexual main character, but this character is asexual and aromantic. Had been on my list for a long time and I knew I was planning to reread Let's Talk About Love, and so I thought why not I'll read them back to back and kind of compare. <laughs> and I liked Loveless a lot better. I think it is better written and it is more interesting. Although I do think it is a little bit longer than it needs to be, like it's around 400 pages and I would have been happy with it being more like 300 pages. 
but I've immediately connected more with the main character. She felt more realistic to me. I felt like I recognized a lot of her feelings and emotions. I just liked her a lot better. And yeah, I feel I felt like this book had a little more going on, a little more meat. I did think it was awfully convenient that the main character happened to have an older asexual cousin to kind of connect with. <laughs> and then the ending also was happy if a little bit convenient. Spoiler alert, at the end the main character ends up living with all of her friends and it's just a very very happy ending, which love a happy ending. Just the fact that they all ended up in a circumstance to live together is convenient. <laughs> but yeah, those are all of the books that I read in August. Overall a good reading month for me. Not a lot of books, but all reasonably enjoyable. Let me know down below what you read in August, and now on to the quote for today's video, which today I have one from Pirates of the Caribbean, and it goes, the problem is not the problem. The problem is your attitude about the problem, which not always true, but probably good if you can recognize when it is. <laughs> but anyways, I hope you enjoyed watching. Remember, words matter.